Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I got an afternoon update on you on these severe storms. They are getting stronger. Matter of fact, our biggest days are going to be overnight for Friday, all day Friday, and overnight into Saturday as well. So it's going to be two days of nocturnal storms. Now the main setup is we're going to have this high pressure is going to be building over here. Now remember, when you have high pressure over you, you have clear weather. So if you're in this high pressure, don't ask if you're going to be getting these storms because you're not because you're in the high pressure. But at the same time, this is going to bring these storms all the way south all the way north into Canada. This is going to be for Thursday going into Friday. Then as you go Saturday into Sunday, this high pressure is going to move further towards the southeast. Now this is going to make these storms curve as you go Saturday into Sunday. Now you can also see this when you look at your pressures and you can see there is a little bit of a block. So as you go into Thursday, there's your high pressure. It's starting to do that block, helping all this precipitation head north. And you can see it also sticks there as it goes through Thursday and Friday. Then your high pressure is going to move over towards the southeast as you go for your Saturday and into your Sunday. You see how it brings all that around and you get that block over in Canada. So that is gonna help shoot all this precipitation. You still got a lot of moisture headed way north all the way from the south. This is gonna bring chances for flooding as well. But I just wanna show you this setup so you understand Thursday and Friday, then Saturday and Sunday. As you go into Thursday, you can see it building, but you can see also Colorado has seen that moderate section and the significant severe right here. Then here you are on Friday. Huge growth for Friday. This is where it's pulling it way up into Canada. And you can see the big growth from this morning on Colorado State University. A bigger moderate section all the way from Iowa, all the way down towards northern Texas. Any significant severe right here. This is going to be chances for large hail, but also chances for EF2 or greater strength tornadoes. I will show you. Your winds aloft are going to be there at different heights. And you can see right here for a Saturday, you can see it also curves around that high pressure for Saturday, bringing severe weather growth all the way in towards Michigan with once again, your moderate level risk. And Sunday, National Weather Service still don't have anything out for Sunday. This is a day seven, everybody. But you can still see the significance still there at Colorado State University. And you can see it with SIPs. They agree that it's going to be Saturday and Sunday. Change the color to red a little bit so you can see it a little bit better if that helps you. But you can see also what you convection as you go Wednesday into Thursday into Friday. It just keeps building as it's getting pulled around by the high pressure. And it's actually connecting towards that low pressure system in Canada. It's going to be a huge wind field that's going to grow from that. You can also see when it curves for Saturday also into Sunday is going to be there as well. Bringing that lift bring you the chances for the severe weather as you go Saturday into Sunday. It's going to be there all four days. Also, your dew points. Your dew points are still going to be there. Raise up Wednesday into Thursday. Still overnight Thursday into Friday. This is where your dry line really kicks in and you get a severe weather in the south. Then it goes for the northern end and you get that cold front kicking in. And now you're going into Saturday. You're going into Sunday. Look at the strong dew points you have for Saturday and Sunday. Your severe weather risk is going to be all the way mainly for Friday, Friday night, Saturday and Saturday night and maybe a little bit of Sunday morning as well. But still showing as you get that high pressure, look at this. You get a surface low in Canada with their storm, but now you got all these winds going all the way from Mexico, getting pulled way up into Canada because that big high pressure bringing everything north. That's bringing everything north. Your dew points, your precipitate water, your convection, your lift. Everything is headed north because of that. That's why that Friday event is bigger. I think it could grow a little bit more. I think we will see more when we start seeing a marginal area. Now you can see as you go towards Saturday, it gets stronger still for that storm that builds up for the upper Midwest. And this is still overnight, early in the morning, bringing your chances for tornadoes, nocturnals. This is overnight storms with wind direction. Look at this. A lot of strong winds. I will go through it so you can see what's going on with all these cells. Then as you go into Saturday, here comes that second storm system, bringing it right towards the same area, bringing strong winds aloft, bringing you chances for tornadoes as you get in that significant severe area all the way up to Sunday morning. It's going to be definitely 48 hours, if not 72 hours 
of very strong and powerful storms. Two strong systems coming. So here you go for Friday evening as these storms starts kicking in. And you can see these storms right here on the south and eastern side of the surface low. This is where you're going to have your most significant severe weather risk. Now you can see this when you look at your winds. When you look at your lower level winds, your 850 millibars, you can see they're really raising up towards that 50. That triangle is indicative to 50 knots. So you got 50, a big bar is 10, a small bar is 5. So you got strong 50 knots going from southwest to the northeast, southwesterlies, all on these storm cells that's brewing up for Oklahoma and Kansas. And you can see on your ground level, your winds are going from the south to the north or the southeast to the northwest. So you really got the wind direction change with height with these two areas and you can see this when you look at this so when you look at these storms you can see that you really have wind direction change of height at the lower level and you also have your 10 meter level going at different directions so it is picking up with speed also in the higher level so even if you don't have a big wind direction change with height you definitely gonna start getting speed shear where these storms will tumble over themselves now if it was speed shear it would be quick spin ups I think this will continue and you to grow. So here you go later in the evening. Now here's your group of thunderstorms on the south and eastern side of that storm. So these are the storm cells you need to watch out for and look at your lower level winds. They are definitely picking up into the 50s once again going from the southwest to the northeast and on your ground level winds they're going a little southerly to northerly winds. So you definitely have your wind direction change with height on these storm cells and that's the ones you're going to have to watch out for. This is where it's moving in towards Missouri, a little bit of eastern Kansas, even northern Arkansas as you get these storm cells moving through. Look at the wind direction on those storm cells. Look at the change with height. This is going to be a potential tornado chance as you go through the day and grow in north. And as you go later into the evening, still have these storms on the southern and eastern side of this surface low. And you can see with your lower level winds that your winds are still picking up. Matter of fact, they're getting stronger. Now they're going from 50 to 55 knots. You see that small line? That is 5. A big line would be 10. So you're getting wind direction change with height. Getting 50 to 55 is picking up with intensity and on your ground level, they're going south to north. So you definitely have wind direction change with height. You definitely have a faster winds at the higher profile, so at least speed here. But you probably got a lot of rotation going on in the atmosphere on these thunderstorms. Now, the only reason you don't see this like HRRR when we get closer, this is not a high resolution model. This is just for the Euro for the time being. But you can see those storm cells getting a wind direction change with height bring your tornadoes in towards Missouri as you go later into Friday. Now, once you go around midnight, this is where it becomes a little more widespread. So you can see where your storms are hanging out on midnight for Friday night, going towards early in the morning for Saturday, and your winds are off. Look how strong they are. They're still showing 50 to 55 knot winds going from the southwest towards the northeast. Some of these are going straight south north, and some are going to the east. And when you look at your ground level winds, you can see they're still going from that south to that north. So these storm cells that's going to be in this region, they're going to get at least a lot of speed shear, a lot of rotation in the atmosphere, but possibly get some chances for tornadoes because we still have wind direction change with height. I'm showing eastern Oklahoma, eastern Kansas, northern Arkansas, especially for Missouri. I think this region right here will get a moderate level just for tornadoes, maybe even significant severe. Now you're going early in the morning to 3 o'clock in the morning. Now you have storms brewing up a little bit further to the north. But when you look out with your lower level winds, you can see you still have strong winds aloft going from the southwest towards northeast. And you get that 50 plus that 10. So now you're getting 60 knot winds. This is cyclogenesis. It's a strengthening low pressure. But now you're getting stronger winds aloft. And when you look at your lower level winds, you can see you're getting them southwesterly going towards the northeast. But most of these are going from south to north and at your greater heights at the 850 they're going really fast from southwest to northeast and at a quicker speed they picked up an in intensity all the way to 60 all the way towards wisconsin all the way towards michigan as you have all these cells that's going to be roaming around this is going to bring you chances for nocturnal tornadoes i cannot say this enough but look at this, as you go through Saturday, this is going to kick up your second storm cell, another strong 
storm kicking in. This is that second storm cell. And you can see at your lower level winds that you are getting 50 to 55 knot winds. Now these are going south to north racing. Also on the ground level, a little bit of an angle, but mostly south to north racing. This is going to bring you chances for large hail. Maybe an isolated tornado you cannot rule out, but this is going to bring chances for large hail. You also can see as you go later into Saturday, that storm cell is still bringing all these storms kicking in for Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Kansas, Missouri, eastern Nebraska, and Iowa. And you can see you still have your strong winds aloft, mostly going from south to north. That's very important, but they are strong winds. And your lower level winds, your 10 meter winds, still going from south to north. You get a little bit of a south easterly in there so a little bit of a wind direction change of height but mostly you're going to see is large hail out of that now that's going to go all saturday and once you go overnight for saturday and towards sunday this is where it's going to change on these storm cells so you still have a lot of chances for the large hail but now you're going to get these strong winds aloft and again a little bit of a southwesterly angle in there getting 50 to 60 even getting 65 knots getting very strong winds aloft and your ground winds are straight south to north that is going to give you a little bit of wind direction change of height for northern missouri for the southern side, this is going to bring chances for damaging winds, but large hail is going to come out of that. And these storms are still going to continue to go to the north as you go through. So I do believe we will have another update for Sunday. And Weather Prediction Center is seeing a lot of heavy flooding still coming with this transition all the way into Canada. Showing it's going to build anywhere from three to five plus inches of potential rainfall for eastern Oklahoma, northwestern Arkansas, southern and northern Missouri, eastern Iowa, and central and western Illinois, a little bit of south and southwestern Wisconsin. A big hot spot of three to five inches coming just in a matter of a couple of days. This is five days out. This is two days later. So here's our first storm system over here in Northern Pacific. This is what we're going to be getting first. This down here, this is going to be our next low pressure building. This is going to bring us our trough of our Saturday and Sunday. So it is two large storms that is coming. Thank you for your time, everybody. I hope this afternoon update has helped you in some way. If it has, consider hitting the like button. It's either down below or on the side. I will keep you updated every single day, and I will do as much as I can to give you the best information so you can help prepare for these storms. Please tell your neighbors. Please alert them so we can take care of their pets as well. There's going to be a lot of people need to watch out for tornadoes. There's going to be a lot of people that watches out for the large hail. I think we'll see the damage and winds a little bit better as we get closer with HRRR. The rest of them is still showing what I told you this morning. It's going to be in the high 40s to low 50s. Nothing super big in that area just yet. Now before you go real quick, Isaiah 40, 29 through 31. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not be faint. Amen. Give your trust to God. Everything that you cannot do on your own will, you can do with his will. Because he gives you everything that you need he made us perfect. You can be perfect within him. He will fix your problems. He has fixed mine. Problems I couldn't even get past. Only with his strength, Yahweh, only with God's strength, was I able to overcome these problems. Give it a chance. Go find a private place. Talk to God. You will be amazed by the outcome. He will talk to you. Remember, everybody, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I always hope he keeps you safe, you and your family and your neighbors, <laughs> everyone you touch and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a great day. Everybody, remember, you can always follow me on other platforms. Links are in the description below. I appreciate every single one of y'all. I'll see you in the morning.